when we started the mobile clinic, we were going into areas that, big surprise, I'm not from. And to be able to go into neighborhoods and have people open up to you and trust you, we needed a liaison of somebody who had worked and lived in the parts of town that we needed to access. Um, sterilize the instruments here. Maybe you should try your And then I'm going to get by you just a second. And then over here, they are anesthetizing the animals, getting them ready for surgery. And then here is where the surgery is done, and we have two surgery tables for the doctor to be able to go back and forth. There isn't a veterinarian in the entire city of Watts. There's not one veterinarian who has the address, Watts, California. So even if the people want to help their animals, they don't have the opportunity. A lot of people, they don't have a car. They take the bus to work. They can't take their dog on a bus five miles to a veterinarian. So we wanted to go to Watts and see what we could do. And a friend of mine who runs another charity called Downtown Dogs, a wonderful woman named Lori White, um, she had an idea that we would do something and there's a popular show called Pimp Your Ride. Well, the two gentlemen from that show, Dane and Q, allowed us to do a parody on the name and we called the day Pimp Your Pit. I have to admit, coming into Watts for the first time with an event called Pimp Your Pit, <laughs> I was a little nervous because everybody told me, oh, this can't be done, and Larry just kept telling me, don't listen to him, don't, don't buy into this, it's all gonna be positive, and of course it was. And the day was hugely successful. And I gotta tell you, you get, we had people coming, like just seeing what's going on, what's going on. We had a thousand people come and go that day. A thousand people in Watts, California, and throw in 123 pit bulls, and we did not have a problem. And I thank Larry for that. A lot of it all started through the uh, competition efforts of Larry Hill because he was, in truth, he was the first one to jump on a, that I know of, of, of African American descent in the LA area. He was the first one that I know of during that time to jump on a plane and compete in a national competition and place. So uh, it, was, it was a great thing and from that, that competition fire and, and flavor has grown to um, many shows here in the Los Angeles area that Larry and myself have done. He's such an asset to the community. Uh, he knows everybody. When we do spay and neuter events or any kind of outreach, uh, Larry is usually the first person I call, see if he's available on that date, and then we kind of plan things around it because not only will Larry come to the event, he'll bring his students, different friends, dog trainers, so that we can have a, a spay and neuter event in a location where everybody tells us, no, it's too dangerous, there's going to be too many loose dogs, uh, what people call gang bangers with the pit bulls and all, all this, and basically it's just a bunch of bullshit because people are usually good, and if you're coming into the community and you're providing a good service and you're coming in with peace and love with a good attitude everything's gonna go fine all right we're going into Lawrence kennel area okay. we're gonna bring out Maya first but I'm gonna put some a dog up Larry okay yeah this is like the third dog know, that she's shown guy, this morning. I think she is too okay. much. Yeah. This is Maya. Hello, Maya. Maya was born on the street with a homeless lady. Yeah. Very, very that? social. Very confident. Good looking dog, oh, too. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. I know. Okay, we're going to close this gate, the catch gate. Yeah, behind you. Just in case. In case somebody okay. breaks. In case somebody breaks. Not likely, but it's always possible. Come on, Maya. Come on, lady girl. Get ready for a lot of barking. This is one of my designs. Minus this little strap piece here. The way that I know, and I can look at this and tell this is my equipment, is because if you look at the holes here in the lead, you see they're all pretty well evenly spaced. I had them skip a space and put these two holes here so we could use this collar for puppies. And as the dog grew up, they would be able to use and stretch the collar out. That's a purebred Staffordshire Terrier. You think so? 
That's a Kobe dog. Really? Really? That's a Kobe dog. Really? Yes. I speak, look at the tail. Cause, okay. Look at the tail. Really? Okay. Look, she, at, look at the crown. Her mannerisms, Larry, are so different. She's a Kobe dog. Okay. 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 Kobe. Kobe, that mean? The Kobe, Kobe line. was a he was yeah. an old yeah. breeder. That's a good line. Uh, it's a very this, stable line. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great dog. Okay. okay great. Ride. Great. Oh, oh, baby. Oh. And then oh, you're, you're okay. okay. Today is June the fifteenth. June the fifteenth. Yeah. Today we're going to go over to Rancho Cienega Park and uh, what we're going to do at Rancho Cienega today, we're going to finalize the last arrangements for doing the dog show. We're going to give them the paperwork, you know, showing that we've got our insurances covered. Uh, we're going to give them the uh, uh, diagram of how we're going to have the vendors and everybody set up around the park, you know, and hopefully, you know, uh, this will take care of the final things that we need to take care of for the show.